Welcome to Bunny Fish Crafts. I'm your host, Heather, known as Bunny Fish on Ravelry, Plurk, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Monday, the 4th of November, 2013. This is episode 51, Fall. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. My week was good. Halloween was good. It rained a lot here. The kids went out at 6. They were back in by 6.45 and soaked, so bathing all around. I took a hefty portion of their candy and passed it back out because my kids don't need that much. I took um, a hefty portion of the chocolate as the tax for being the mother who made the costumes, and everybody's pretty happy with that. Before we start, I know I'll forget, I'm not hurt. I started making a dragon for my nephew because he saw Gabriel's dragon head. My sister was watching the podcast, and she was like, that's so cool. And my nephew was like, oh, ask Auntie Mama if she'll make a dragon head for me. So, of course, I said yes. And I put covering over this hand, the hand that was holding the mask as I was spraying, and forgot about the spray back. So, don't be concerned. I totally scared a couple people at knitting yesterday because it just doesn't want to wash off. It's off of the bottom for the most part, but not off of the top, and I've washed my hands many, many times. Anyway, let's uh, let's talk about the sweater knit along. That started on the 1st, and it will run through December 31st. Any sweater that you want to make, you can make whatever you want. Work in progress, UFO, whatever. New project, one sweater per person, one entry per person. You can make as many sweaters as you want, but you only get one entry into the prize drawing, which still undecided. I'll figure it out. If anyone wants to donate a prize, that's cool. I just haven't figured out what to do yet. If you have suggestions, let me know. And the tag for that is BPH sweater. I started my sweater, but you have to wait. You have to wait. I did finish the sweater this week. Finished that very, very bright Christmassy dog sweater. This is sweater number four of five for the dog, and I used Knit Picks Wool of the Andy Superwash. The green is called grass, and the red is called red. So here's the dog sweater. It's shorter than the other ones because there's no back shaping in the pattern, and I didn't want to try to figure out back shaping while I was doing Fair Isle, so I decided to let it do what it wanted. I hope that this isn't as laggy in actuality as it's appearing on my screen right now, and if it is, I'm really sorry, I'm probably not going to re-record. So, finished object number one. Finished objects two through four are all spinning. Last week I said I wasn't going to start anything until November 1st, and I didn't. Oh, it was so hard though. It was so difficult not to start things because I really, really wanted to start things right after the podcast, but I didn't. So I finished the Fiber Cat Mystery Bat, and unknown what's in it, I listed what I thought it might be last week. This ended up being about 58 yards, and it's 30 grams. And it's a little bit thick and thin. It was the first time that I was spinning from the fold, so I was mostly just going for spinning it and not really worrying about um, consistency so much. It was just practicing, so there's that. Oh, my hand looks ghastly. Sorry about that. And that's my showing hand, so can't can't fix it. You might remember I was spinning yarn for my best friend, Mary Lee. And I just, I got to this much yarn and I was like, yep, that's enough. That's enough art yarny goodness. This is my favorite part right here. What I did was I have some colored locks that I was given by a woman at my knit group. And I have some just brown wool. It's a Cordale mix sheep, I think. So I spun the lock with the wool and then I two plied it. I just did an Andy and ply. This is 12 yards, also 30 grams. So it's pretty bulky. 
but I kind of, I kind of love it and it's going to be hard to give up because I kind of love it. But what would I use this for? I mean, I guess I could make a monster, but, and I do kind of want to make a button monster, but Mary Lee will actually use it. She actually likes art yarn. Like, I like art yarn too, but she finds it really useful. So she makes um, yarn falls. And so that will be good for her. And I also finished off something that has been sitting for a really long time. If you have watched this podcast for a while, then you might remember that I had a candle catastrophe. I don't know, a long time ago. Last winter, maybe in the spring, I have no idea. Sorry, Molly is settling under my desk, so she's making lots of racket. Anyway, I had a candle catastrophe. I was spinning, I set my spindle down next to my candle, and I had intended it to only be like 10 minutes that I set it down, but then something happened with kids or something. I don't remember exactly what happened. All I know is I came back later and the wax had gotten all over my spindle. It was just a CD spindle, so it wasn't as tragic as it could have been, but it was all in the fiber. Well, I tried to clean the fiber and get the wax out, and it wasn't really coming out. It kind of was, but it wasn't. So I just set aside the fiber. And I finally picked it up, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to finish it off. So what I did was I took the singles. I had two separate piles, spun the singles together, and then Andy and plied that two-ply, so it's a four-ply. And I think that's called a cable ply, but I didn't look it up before I started, so I'm sorry if that's not right, but I think it's cable ply. And it's the first time I've done that, and that was really cool. And it ended up like this. Can you see the wax still coming off? I tried to wash out more of the wax, and I got rid of more of it, but there's still wax in it. I'm hoping Mary Lee can still use it, and if not... She can just lie to me and said that she used it, and I won't feel bad about, you know, it had wax in it. But again, with the with the yarn falls, you can use different textures of yarn, and the wax won't necessarily take away from that. I'm probably, these have all been washed. I'm probably going to take this outside, though, and hit it up against the porch to try to get more of that wax broken out of it. Finished object number five is the one cast on that I allowed myself, that I said on the podcast last week that I was going to allow myself so that I could be in the sort of a knitter, sort of a knit along with the Geonitrix um, studio design stuff from Josh. I don't remember what it was called, but Josh Rex, he's the designer. The idea was to knit something with one of his patterns and I did, oh no, I thought I wove in all the ends, but I didn't, I didn't weave in this end. So I will weave in that end after I, right after I finish recording so that I can put it away. But I did the Rock Stratomits by Josh Ricks and I used random worsted weight acrylics. Uh, no, the black is random worsted weight. The purple is Red Heart Super Saver in plum or dark plum. I used a US size six, which is 4.0 millimeters to make them for my sister. And hopefully she likes them. She should. Purple is her color and black is like her secondary color. So they should work fine for her. This is the third time I've made the the mitts. I went down a needle size because this is on needles as called for and it's too big. My front door just opened. I'm going to go check and make sure that wasn't a child. I'll be right back. That was my front door and my daughter did go outside. She decided it was time to check the mail. Which, it's far too early in the day to check the mail. But we went and checked anyway. There was no mail, which is unfortunate. <sighs> Sidetrack. So today, I'm waiting for the mail to come because, oh, a month ago, we ordered new belts for our vacuum. You can't just go to Walmart and pick up the, the type that you need for our vacuum. I tried. Didn't fit. So you have to actually order them through the Hoover website. Well, last time we ordered belts, I said, hey, 
we should see how much a new power cable cord thing for the vacuum costs because we've had our vacuum for two and a half years, which isn't that long, really, in the grand scheme of vacuums. But we had a, but we had a puppy who liked to chew it a little bit. We broke her of that really fast, but, you know, she had still chewed it a little bit. And Gabriel likes to play with the vacuum and likes to, like, tie the cord around things and then pull on it. Not great. I, of course, tell him to stop when I see it, but yeah, sometimes he plays with it and I don't see it because I'm doing other things like cleaning or stuff with Mara or whatever. Going to the bathroom for 30 seconds. So when we ordered the the vacuum belt, I was like, hey, let's order this cord. And she was like, no, it'll be fine. We'll just wait. Well, now we're waiting. It finally broke and he ordered it the next day and he had it shipped, but he hadn't changed his shipping address on Amazon to the new place. It was still to the old place. So it's on its way here. It was supposed to be here Thursday. Hopefully it'll be here today though because they had to forward the package. Anyway, digression. I was talking about these mitts and how I made them a little bit smaller so that they would fit my sister's hands. I don't know if her hands are as big as mine or if they're a little bit smaller. This still fits my hand, but it's snug now. Not tight. I can still move my hands, still full range of motion, but it's snug. My mitt, on the other hand, on the actual other hand even, is kind of loose. It goes up higher. It's just kind of loose. So she gets the smaller ones that, um, if her hands are smaller than mine, will fit. I don't know. I don't think we've tested that out in a while, hand size. So those are the things that I finished. Let's talk about what I've been working on. I picked up the miter square lap gown this past week, and now I'm sitting on it, apparently. So I finished the last square on the third row. And I started the first square on the fourth row, which will be the last row. This is how wide it is going to be, which I think is the perfect width. I think that three was going to be too small, and I'm very thankful to my sister for sending me her leftovers in Lion Brand Homespun, which is what I'm making this lap gown out of, and other comparable yarns. Uh, this blue, for instance, right here that I'm using is Karen Simply Soft Chunky, maybe? Bulky? I don't know. Whatever their similar weight is. I'm using US size 10, which is 6.0 millimeters, says my notes, to make this lap gown, and it's just a miter square pattern pick up the sides and decrease in the middle. It's really easy. Type it into any search engine and I can show you. I picked up a languishing project this week. You haven't seen this since June, maybe July, because this is the project that I started when I went to the zombie apocalypse. I think I started it the night before and then worked on it on the plane and worked on it there. And when I, when I got on the plane home, I started the gusset. And I got home and continued on the gusset and then went to start the foot. Read the foot pattern and was like, oh, I did the gusset wrong. So I had to pull out the gusset. And then it sat there four months because it was in timeout. I just, I wasn't emotionally ready to pick it up. Silly, right? But I just wasn't, I, I was like, no, cookie A is too crazy. I can't do, this is cookie A. This pattern is called nebula. I was like, I just can't, my brain won't go there. So I picked up, here is where I was. This is where the gusset starts. So I've done this portion. And I am almost done with the sock, actually. I have 
less than 10 rounds until I start the toe. I would say probably six. So next week I should have the first one done and be started on the second one. I would like to say that V cans are amazing because sometimes you need to have a sounding board. You need people to be like, uh, how about this? I was working on this pattern and I'm sure you can tell that along this edge things stop. Well, I was reading one of the charts and it was called the decrease chart, but for the first several rounds you didn't decrease. And I was like, okay, I'm sure this makes sense somehow, but I don't understand. It was 11 at night, 10 at night. I don't know. It was getting late-ish and I was kind of tired. So I was like, I don't get this. Someone please help me work this out because I know it will work and I trust the pattern. I just can't get myself to knit on it because I don't trust it enough to do it right now. So then Josh was like, well, do you decrease later? And I, so I looked at the chart and yeah, sure enough, all those missing decreases at the beginning of the chart showed up at the end of the chart. I was like, well, yeah, that's why I keep you. Because sometimes you need people to tell you that, hey, this is why it makes sense. This yarn is super gorgeous. It's not a stripey, but it is striping. It's a variegated. It's got these cool little skinny stripes. Well, I think it's variegated. I would classify it as variegated. It is by Test Designer Yarns. I don't have the ball band. It was a really tiny little ball band and it's, I know that I've seen it in the past couple of weeks. I just don't know where. Oh, and these stitch markers. I can't remember if I showed you these stitch markers back in June because they were on this project and maybe I did and maybe I didn't. But these are the stitch markers that we got in our goodie bag at the Knitpocalypse. They're from Absolute Wonder and there's a little zombie guy. There's his face. And then these green rings with black beads. And I'm really sad because it came with a lot. It came with more than three. But I lost all but three while I was at the ZK. Just because I was sitting and not paying attention and a stitch marker would, you know, fly off the needle and I wouldn't notice. And then I'd get up and do stuff and then I would notice. So that's really sad because I really like these green rings. I think they're really, really cool. I'm glad that I got back to working on these socks. It wasn't difficult. I still had the pattern memorized, even, you know, a bajillion years later for the, for the panels themselves. I knew what I was doing. I just had to read the gusset. And as soon as I read it, I was like, really? That was my problem? Silliness. These will be for me. I'm working on... Everything else is new, but there's not a lot of new, a little bit. I cast on three things on November 1st. First is this right here. This is Royal Iris slouch hat by Meltran Designs. I did a different brim than is called for. In the pattern, you do a, uh, a rib brim. And one of my friends, Briar, made like six of these hats in two weeks or something ridiculous. I don't know how long it actually was, but it was a really short time span right after the pattern came out and she just went crazy. And she decided to do this um, turned hem, that's how it's called. You do your provisional cast on, you knit what you need. Then you take a needle and slip it through the stitches from the provisional cast on. So now you have two needles. And then you knit one from one needle and one from the other together and go ahead and go on knitting as you would. I didn't provisionally cast on onto scrap yarn. I just provisionally cast on to a spare needle and went with it. So that was the modification to this pattern. I'm in the decreases right now. So this hat will actually be finished tonight and then blocked and probably sent off before I record next week unless, you know, crazy things happen, which they might. 
So there will either be this or a picture of this next week. And this yarn is fantastic. I haven't worked with this yarn since this brand of yarn since uh, January, I think. It is Science Monkey Mercantile. It's on Etsy. It's a Faraday sock yarn in Texecuted. It is 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. And I love this stuff. The colors that I used in January, I made uh, knee-high socks that were pink and black variegated. And this is red and black and white. Also variegated, as you can tell. On the brim, which was worked on size 1 US 2.25 millimeter needles, it had a definite stripe and then up in the hat itself, it has a much slower spiral going on, which I really like. And the recipient seems to enjoy as well, which is good. I cast on a pair of arm warmers as well. This is Karen Simply Soft with its center yarn barf in the colorway Dark Sage. And I will be making cabled glovelets. I wrote down cabled gloves, but I'm pretty sure it's cabled glovelet glovelets by Meg White. As always, all information will be in the show notes. So they look really tiny, right? but there's a lot of ribbing and they're wide enough for my big hands. And I'm making them for a girl, so they should fit her hands just fine. I'm about to split for the thumb. And I did this all on the first and then just didn't work on it anymore. Decided to work on other projects instead. My last November 1st cast on is my sweater for the sweater knit along and this is how far I am this is the top well this is the top of the sweater it's a top-down sweater it's tap and Z by Amy King it's a free pattern on knitty and this part right here is the diamond motif I just started it This is 716 knit in the 716 boss base, and the colorway is Dead Guys on Ice. There's the card, Dead Guys on Ice. It's 100% superwash merino, it's a DK weight, and I am alternating skeins because it is indie dyed. And the way I'm doing it, instead of having two balls, I took it, I wound the first hank, and then I attached them with a slip knot together in the center just so that they were attached, but not so that it would be impossible to get them unattached to weave in ends and I wouldn't have to cut. And then I wound the second ball, and the second ball I'm pulling from the outside, and the first ball I'm pulling from the inside so that it's the same as if I were working a pair of socks from the inside and outside of a ball of yarn. Uh, I don't know if you can see around my cat right now. I'm sorry about that if there was cat back in your way. He's uh, currently laying on the stuff I just showed you. Luckily all of it's going to people who aren't allergic to cats. He's being very affectionate. I think it's because it's getting chilly outside. I love this colorway. I want to talk about that first. Can you see right here? No, oh, not there. Right there, there's like a reddish bit. I don't know if that's where yarn broke or if those are intentional red spots. I don't know, but I love them. They're my favorite part of this colorway, the little pops of red. I also like where it's really, really light. I just love this colorway. I love all of Jenna's colorways though. This is the first time I've actually worked with 716 Knit stuff, so that's exciting, and, you know, go big or go home, I guess, with the sweater. I don't know if I will finish this by the end of the month, because um, November is National Knit Sweater in the Month 
month or something like that. It's to it's a riff off of National Novel Writing Month. I don't know if this has enough stitches. I would have to do the math, and I haven't yet. But I have been working on it every day, so I might get it done in the month. And it sits like this. I can kind of show you. My cable isn't quite long enough to stretch out completely, but it will sit like this. It's a short sleeve cardigan. Oh, well, it's basically a, like a cap sleeve, kind of. There aren't really sleeves. It looks like I haven't run the pattern all the way through because I don't. I should, but I don't. It looks like you just um, bind off for the sleeves and then pick up under and go with the body and you don't go back to the sleeves. I could be wrong. As I said, I didn't read it. I did a swatch for this sweater, which I have only ever once done a swatch. And that was for my sister's sweater because it was the first time I was knitting a sweater. And I did the swatch, and I washed it, and then I made the sweater, and it turned out perfectly. Well, I did a swatch for this, and it's a small swatch. I just didn't want to use that much yarn for a swatch, and I did want to wash it in the washing machine because I know. I should hand wash the sweater. Should hand wash the sweater. I can't promise that I'm going to hand wash the sweater. It deserves hand washing, but I can't promise that. Well, maybe you can see that red spot. I don't know if it's showing up red or if it's just showing up black, but this spot right here is red and, oh, it's so gorgeous. Love it. Anyway, I did the swatch, and when I did the stitches, it was, um, it's, the gauge is supposed to be 20 stitches for 4 inches, and this middle section here on the recommended needle size was 20 stitches for 5 inches, and I was like, oh, that's huge, and then I washed it, and it was 20 stitches for 4 inches, so here's to hoping that the swatch doesn't lie to me. We'll see. Worst case scenario, I will be giving this gorgeous sweater away to my sister if it's too big, or my best friend if it's too small. I hope it's not too big. I hope it fits, and I'm really excited about this color. I don't, I don't buy blue clothes, obviously, back to black again this week, but I think that this sweater will look really nice over this shirt in particular. It's like, it's a long sleeve. I have sleeves pushed up, but it's a long sleeve, so I can layer this over my black long sleeve t-shirts or my black short sleeve t-shirts or my black tank top. It's a good color for layering over black. And I'm really enjoying working on it. This yarn is really, really, it has a really nice twist. It's smooshy in all the right ways. It feels strong. It's fabulous. I love Jenna's stuff. And I think it has really good stitch definition, too. That's my opinion. I started one other project this week as well. It's a spinning project because I really missed having a spinning project. I'm probably going to start a new one this week as well, too. But I started Superwash BFL from Hippie Penguin Fibers. This was the 2013 Club Colorway Carnival Bears. This is what it looks like. I've barely started this. I got 20 minutes into spinning and that's it because I didn't spin at all yesterday. Sundays are not good days for spinning because we do a lot of running around. And also I'm at knitting for about three hours out of the day. So this is how far I am. That's how thick the yarn is. I'm going for another fingering weight three ply, but I have eight ounces of this. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to use it for. I just know that I'm going to be spinning it for um, ever. It took me six months to do four ounces of Superwash Merino, so it might take me a year to do eight ounces of Superwash BFL. You probably won't be seeing it every week, but here it is. Here's the start. Started it on Saturday. And I love these colors. I'm, I'm very into blue right now. I'm going to cast on, I'm going to start another spinning project with a pink and blue fiber and 
two other projects that I want to cast on this month have blue in them. And my next lapkin square is going to be two shades of blue. It's a lot of blue going on. It's okay though. Sock yarn blanket didn't get love. I did one square. I'm not going to show you one square. Mostly because I'm sitting on my sock yarn blanket right now and that would be a lot of moving around. Also, I'm probably putting my sock yarn blanket on the back burner for the next two months because it's I took a picture this morning and I'm getting really serious. All the about projects it. that I want to finish. in the next two months and those are just what I want to finish. That doesn't include projects that I intend to work on through the next two months like the Superwash BFL that I want to continue spinning but don't intend to finish by the end of the year. Something had to give and it was the sock yarn blanket because most of those things on that baby blanket are gifts for other people. So sock yarn blanket set to the side. Hopefully I'll be able to do a couple squares here and there, but I will just show you the sock yarn blanket again in January, unless I have a week where I do a lot, because I don't want to just show you one a week. It's a lot of effort to find it on the blanket. And I know people enjoy seeing it grow, but it's not going to grow. However, the Ravelinic Games, or whatever they're calling it, this time is coming up in January, I think. I'm pretty sure that I have my timetable correct. And last time they had the modular medley or something, where you could pick a modular project and state your goal for how many pieces you wanted to make on that modular project. So I think that might be my Re Revelinic project to get, you know, X amount of squares done in that time period. Like three a day or something would be my goal, which is kind of a lot, but kind of not a lot. The, the hard part would be to make myself do three a day because I would have to work on the blanket every day, which I don't do. I do one square per day, but I don't do that square necessarily on that day. Sometimes I binge and do all seven in one day. That's my plan for the sock yarn blanket. Know that it is still loved, it's just not receiving time worked on. At least not until I get some of those projects done. Because right now I'm like, how am I going to get all that done? It shouldn't be too bad though, because I've been averaging for the past month four projects a week, I think, finished. We'll see. I don't, I don't expect that to go on forever. I can't maintain that level of output. But if I can get two projects done a week and significant project progress made on other projects, I'll be in pretty good shape. I finished reading Ender's Game. It was really good. And I feel like it should have been sad for me. Well, it kind of speaks to my view of how some humans think of other species that I'm not sad at the outcome. I, I found it a tragedy, but I wasn't sad about it. I don't know if that makes sense. Like it was, it was a sad thing that that happened, but I wasn't deeply affected by it because I kind of expect that behavior. That's all I'm going to say. It was really good. It's the first book of a quintet, I think. So I plan to read all five books, just not right now. I don't usually read series back to back read one, take a few months off, and then read the next one. I started listening to A Feast for Crows. So this is a case where I love listening to these books back to back. I cannot read the Game of Thrones books though. I tried. I tried really hard to read the first one. <sighs> no good. So I got the audiobook and I was like, yes, this is amazing. I just think that for certain styles, 
of writing, I do much better listening to it where I can engage parts of my brain in something else versus reading. Because I read and knit at the same time, but I usually knit on a miter square or something while I'm reading. Whereas when I'm listening, I can knit on any of my projects. So even when the book gets very political or very wordy or whatever, I'm still engaged in both the book and the knitting or the book and the cleaning or whatever I happen to be doing at that time. I'm really enjoying A Feast for Crows. I downloaded it through my library. I don't know if you know about how libraries are switching over to digital media. Not completely, but they're offering it because I was in a VKN and some of the people didn't know about it. And Briar then went to everybody's local library for them online and found the rent ebooks thing. I went to the library's website to place a hold for a Feast for Crows and it wasn't available on audiobook for a while because there were, I don't know, 10 holds or something. But they had electronic media, which I could download right away. So I was like, uh, yes, yes, I will borrow this book. So what it is, is you go for my library, you find your electronic resource, and then it redirects you to a website and you download the content and use your barcode, the, the number on the back of your library card to gain temporary access for the book. So I have this ebook for two weeks. I'm on to the last things. Three podcasts. Cotswold Knitter is Katie and she lives in England. So fantastic accent for those of us who don't live in England. She knits a lot. She has two kids. She just bought some yarn from Penguin Soup for her son that was pink, which he will not be using. Or he will not he will not wear because it's pink. And he magically like he asked for that color. It's based off of Pokemon and he likes the Pokemon and didn't think about the fact that it was pink which I enjoy. I enjoy listening to her tell the stories of knitting for her kids and just about the kids in general. Hers are older than mine, though. The second is one that just started, actually. I only watched the first episode because that's all there is. It is called Homespun Podcast, and Claire is from England, and Molly is from the U.S., but they are both living in Germany and they have little, little ones. Claire has been knitting for only a few years and Molly has been knitting her whole life. So it's interesting to see that dynamic work together. And I look forward to watching them grow and hopefully you can give them a check out as well. And the last one is the knitting game and other stuff with Leslie. I mentioned this, oh, back in ZK time, because we met each other at ZK, and I just didn't watch, I watched a few episodes here and there, but I didn't watch the entire run, which is kind of long. She just posted episode, uh, I might be making this up, but I want to say 81. She's been going for a while. And the premise behind Knitting Game and other stuff is she has a lot of knitting books that she hasn't knit out of or hadn't when it started. So she wanted to offer up patterns out of the books and people could vote on what they wanted her to knit out of the book. Really cool, right? Well, that's where she started, was with the patterns. And the way it would work is two patterns would go up, up, up against each other for a week. And then the next week, the winner would go up against a different pattern. And that would go on for four weeks. So it was a total of five patterns that she talked about. And then she would knit the winner. 
Well, it went on like that for a while. And then she decided to take the winner of one of the knitting games and ask what yarn she should use. So she did that for four weeks. And then um, when life got busy and stuff and she had a lot in the queue, she goes to festivals. So for instance, ZK, she broke up what she bought into four different stashes to show on the podcast and had people vote based on a name that she gave each of the stash. It's really fun. It's interactive, which is fun. You get to click a poll, which I like. Right now, she is having a vote for what yarn she should use for a project, and she has done three weeks of voting. This is either the third or fourth week of voting. I can't remember. But it's really fun to tune in and watch that, and then after the the game portion, she talks about what she's working on that isn't game-related. And she spins, she sews. It's really entertaining. I enjoy watching her. She's very mellow, which is good. My front door is opening again. I'll be right back. That was my boyfriend coming home. I'm going to say goodbye. I hope you made something fantastic with your six and string, and I will see you next week.